Hello and welcome to the fourth video in the Bayside workflow series. Uh, today's video is going to cover the shots view. So the shots view is available in the view tab and the shots and the shortcut key is control H. So the shots view is an overview of your project. Um, it allows really quick navigation um, and it's an essential tool when you're setting up your scene. So it's really good for making um, group adjustments to metadata, uh, things like input format, uh, input color space. Again, you can navigate around your timeline really quickly. You can also export EDLs and PDF reports. You can select missing material. And of course, you can filter by a vast array of different metadata options, which can be really useful for reviewing clips and also just for managing your media. So yeah, really comprehensive tool. Um, so let's get straight into it. Um, so first of all, there's two views that you can view the shots view in. Uh, the first one that it defaults with is the list view. Uh, this can be changed to the grid view over here. The grid view is really useful for quick visual recognition. So if you just wanted to quickly scan your way through the shots in your scene and uh, navigate to this clip, you can go ahead and click it and it'll jump to that point in the timeline. Uh, to change the size of the thumbnails here, if you hit command middle mouse button drag to the right, it'll make them larger and to the left smaller. So it's command middle mouse button drag to the right and to the left. Uh, we're going to be doing the rest of the tutorial though in the list view because it's a little bit more comprehensive. So as you can see, the list view has columns of metadata. So we've got the thumbnail, time code, we have clip name, and in this case we have input format and input color space. You can change any of these columns using the toggle column button so you can remove and add anything you'd like. Let's start at the basics. So how do you select shots in the shots view? But first of all, if you click on any of the shots in the shots view, your cursor will jump to that shot. But if you actually want to select these clips, um, you'll have to command click. Now you can see that this red border has appeared here. You can command click as many clips as you want. Now if I hide some of the shots view, you can see when I selected these clips, they've also selected in the cuts view. Normally, I find it the most useful when the shots view selects the strips and the timeline, not the cut view. Um, and you can change this behavior really easily. So first of all, I'm just going to go ahead and right click and deselect the shots I just selected. And I'm going to go to my customize menu and select stack top strips. Now, if I command click these clips again, you can see that first of all, the borders are yellow, not red. They have not highlighted in the cuts view, but they've in fact highlighted in the timeline. Now I can move these strips with my traditional timeline controls. So I can hit Alt up arrow and Alt down arrow. And I find that the most useful in my day-to-day -day base I use. So I normally have my select stack top strips on. Now to navigate to these clips, I can either just click on them with the left mouse button. And as you can see, the cursor will jump through the timeline. You can see that there's a purple highlight or you can see that I've got a little navigation arrow down here, which will allow me to jump to these clips using these arrows here. Now I'm going to deselect these clips and we're going to do a little task. So you can see that in my input format column that we have some mixed resolutions here. So we have HD and we've got a DCI scope format. You can see it's currently being grouped by the record time code. So that is the current ordering of this list view. But if I go ahead and click input format, you can see that it's now ordering by input format. If I click it once more, you'll see that the ordering reverses. Okay, so I'm going to click it once again, and you can see that my four DCI 2048 by 858 clips appear at the, at the top. Now that it's ordered correctly, I'm going to command click the first clip, and I'm going to shift click the bottom DCI clip. And now you can see that I've got my four DCI clips selected. Now I can hit command G, and you can see that they are now flashing. If I hit control H to hide the shots view, you can see that my clips are also now flashing in the timeline. So control H to get back to the shots view. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and change one of these formats back to HD. And you can see now that all of my clips have been changed to HD. So you can see really powerful functionality here. If you had metadata on mass that you needed to change like input color space or input format, or name, all of those things can be changed from here. If you wanted to change this to reflect the shot file name, there's a really easy expression to do that in the shots view. So if I hit Command G again to go back into group grading mode, if I select one of the fields and hit 
percent %w and hit enter. So I'm going to insert the substitution, which is yes, and the percent %w is the shot file name. I'm going to go ahead and turn group grading off with command G, right click, deselect all. The next really powerful feature of the shots view is the filtering. You can see the filtering sub panel down here, but I'm going to go up to the top left and create a new tab. Okay, and I'm going to name this tab Opticals. Now, what I'm going to do is all of the clips in this timeline that I've put transforms or respeeds, I've marked with a category. So what I'm going to do in this tab, I'm going to filter by that category so I can see all of the shots that have opticals applied. So I'm going to go down to my filtering options and I'm going to filter by category. And I'm going to change this to the default strip category, which is what I've marked my opticals as. I would be quite interested to see what the increment of these clips are. So I can go ahead and do that with the metadata columns drop down. I'm going to go ahead and add source timecode. You can see that appears there. And I'm also going to go ahead and insert this M2 field. This M2 column refers to the frame rate of the clip. So you can see for these shots here, if I click on this one and hide the shots view with Control H, you can see that the increment here is 1. This is a 25 FPS clip. And here it's listed as 50. So if I go ahead and click this guy and hit Control H, you can see that this increment field has been changed to 200%. Okay, so the M2 field allows you to see what increments you have applied to your clip. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to remove the input color space because I don't really care about that for this opticals view. So now we have this filtered tab, we can do a couple of things. Um, if we go up to the cog here, we can export an EDL. And as you can see, it's just going to export the three shots listed in this tab. Um, we can go ahead and export a PDF report. And as you can see, if we go to the second page here, it has all of the metadata columns that we have specified in the opticals tab. The last thing we're going to look at is the select missing material button in the cogs menu. So up here we have select missing material. So I'm going to go ahead and click this once. And as you can see, it's automatically jumped to this clip down the bottom. Now, there's no border around this clip, but that's only because we haven't got the cuts view shots selected. So if we go ahead and change this, the select missing material button only works with the cut view shots. So again, really great way to really easily jump to um, clips that are missing in your timeline. If we go ahead and close the shots view, um, you do have to be a little bit careful. Um, you can see that this end clip, because we've changed this respeed to two, um, there's not enough media at the end of this clip, so it's going offline. You can see in the shots view that it didn't select this clip as missing media. So you've got to take this with a little grain of salt. It won't find all missing frames. It'll just find all missing shots. So this is a helpful tool, but shouldn't be your last resort for finding missing material. And that's the shots view. Um, I hope that was a useful overview of some of the functionality of the shots view. If you enjoyed that video, head over to my Patreon account and show me some support. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.